Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are looking at the Festag Beta Update Update. Yeah, we what? what? <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you guys um, think you've seen this video already, no you haven't. Well, you might have, but probably not. Um, I did a similar video on uh, the Festag uh, Beta Update. But there's been an update to that update, but it's still a beta. Uh, or beta. I always say beta, because it sounds like it isn't spelt, and usually that's the British way of doing things. But no, beta is American. Which is odd, because they tend to go phonetically. Anyway, whatever. So, uh, yeah, there's been an update. There's been an update to the update. So, still beta, and uh, the previous changes are still in beta. It's the same same beta. There we go. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're just going to go over the multiplayer stuff. And, actually, there's a lot. <laughs> there's still a lot. This includes the stuff that had been mentioned before, but a lot of that stuff has been tweaked. So, um, slightly different things. So, we're going to go through it all and see what's what. So, there's been a load of campaign stuff and campaign fixes. Um, I'll link this in the description for anyone who wants to know about it. So, a lot of skill changes, things like that. But, we're just going to talk about the, uh, the balance changes. So, starting off with Bretonnia, the Green Knight. Hit reactions, ignore chance from uh, 0 to 50. So, basically, his ignore chance has gone up. So, rather than him getting staggered all the time, he's going to get staggered like half of the time. So, that's nice. Uh, also, knock interrupts, same thing. So, um, he's not going to get... Uh, yeah, he's not he's not going to bother so much about, you know, freaking out every time he's hit. So he'll get more work done. I like that. Also, some more AP melee damage and extra extra base damage as well. Maylene. Okay, cool. Anyway, um, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice change. He's very expensive, and usually if someone has brought any magic damage at all, you can just nuke him, you know? He's, he's very vulnerable to a lot because he is ethereal. So to have something that expensive and ethereal, you know, to be on a coin flip, you want him to get some work done. You really do. It's also Pegasus Knights. Their mass has gone up, and they're cheaper. I really like this change, because the extra mass, it means I can be able to sort of push through units more, so you won't have quite so much of a problem of you charge in with your Pegasus Knights, half of them get stuck in Spearmen, and then those couple that are stuck keep pulling the entire unit back towards them every time you try and get out of the engagement. I hate that. It's so annoying, so that's going to happen less. And they're a bit cheaper, which I think is good, because nobody brings Pegasus Knights, which is a real pity. They are very interesting. They are very cool units. So that's nice. Hopefully that will help her uh, help them out a lot. Also, Grail Guardians are cheaper, which I think is interesting. Um, I guess it makes sense because people tend to favor the Grail Knights because you get the extra, like, charge bonus, all right? Um, if you're using cavalry properly, I'd say, you're going to be running in and out of fights a lot, and Grail Knights are just better at that than the Grail Guardians. So it makes sense that the Grail Guardians are going to be cheaper. It means that you can actually have a holding force of cavalry, and you're not having to sort of pay for the lack of uh, charging. So it means you can kind of go, all right, I don't want the micro, I'll go Grail Guardians. They can just get into the fight, stay there for ages, and kill everything for me. Brilliant. I like that. I think that's a very nice change. So a little bit cheaper. Not much. Not much of a change, but enough, I think, to make a bit of difference. Also, Knights Errant, they're going to have a slightly better charge bonus, which I think is a good thing, because they do tend to die very quickly. Even, even not in very prolonged combat, they can go down fairly fast. So if they can get a little bit more work done on that charge, I think that's going to be going to be very beneficial. Same thing to the defense of the Fleur de Lee, but of course they're just the Regiment Renown, so they're going to mimic the stats there. The Grail Reliquary Icon of Devotion Abilities effect, uh, effect range has been changed from 40 to 55 meters. So that's nice. So it means one Reliquary will cover a larger amount of the army. Really nice change that. It means you don't necessarily have to bring like three of them to make it worthwhile, you know? So that's good bit of extra range. I love it. So, Charybdis, now aquatic. Makes sense. It's a big sea beast. Weird that it wasn't before. Also, Raven Heralds are cheaper, which I think is a very strange one, because they're such a niche pick, but against certain factions, they will just, you know, double their value. Um, you can just have them fight, uh, you know, sort of shoot at Vermeer with great weapons or something. You can wipe out that unit before it gets any work done. And it's p and then the Raven Heralds are paid for themselves, and there's very little you can do to combat that. So, there's a lot of great tools um, that could be destroyed by Raven Herald in a lot of matchups where you can't really deal with them. So I think this is a pretty bold pick um, to make these guys cheaper. I'd say, I'd say they're niche but stupidly valuable in those uh, in those matches. So making them cheaper seems an odd choice to me, but we'll see how that affects things. Also, the Thane now has access to the Rune of Slowness in multiplayer. I like that. I like that a lot because uh, well, the dwarves need things to. You know, they need ways to slow things down. The Master Engineer now does not have the Rune of Slowness, though. Which, I guess, makes more sense, because the Rune of Slowness is like a air of effect slowing aura. So, why would you have that in your back line? No, you want that in the front line so the back line can get work done. Not so the back line can maybe escape things, because it's not that much of a slow. So, yeah, if, if they're within range of the Master Engineer, 
slowing them down is the least of your worries. You've got to slow them down a lot, or just kill them, or stop them, or, or you've already lost. So, not really getting much use out of it there. So I think with the Thane, it's much more useful. Empire. Mortars are a bit cheaper. I think that's a good call. You rarely see mortars, but they're actually a lot of fun. They're pretty good. Pretty good units, but they you tend to be able to get cheaper things um, that'll do the job fine, you know? Um, it's usually at the expense of something else in your army, and that thing is going to be more worthwhile than the mortar. So making them a little bit cheaper, I think, is a good move, and hopefully we'll have some more diverse artillery in Empire armies without being a bit cheaper, which is always a good thing. Flagellants. Increase the strength of the penitent ability's physical resistance effect from plus 12 to plus 15 percent so they're gonna be a little bit more survivable with just a touch more physical resist not a huge difference but a little little tweak greenskins crimson killers plus 20 men on ultra so um apparently this translates to just they have as many men in a unit as um uh, blackhawks across the board supposedly so they're not gonna have a tiny tiny model count which is a bit crap to be honest their tidy model count it means artillery just gets so much value killing them so um they're never worth bringing you know it's very rare that they get any work done so with the extra men it just means that they won't get completely wiped out by artillery before they can get any work done they are going to be way more expensive though have less armor less health per ent entity less charge bonus less ap damage and it's going to take them longer to attack but with that many extra men, they're going to get a lot of work done. Um, the extra cost, though, seems odd because I feel like they're... It's a weird one because they perform for their cost if they're allowed to perform at all. That's the weird thing. So I guess with the extra men, suddenly they'll actually be able to perform. And I guess they were completely outperforming things. I think their stats were just so inflated for the fact that they had, you know, fewer models. And they'd rarely get into a fight. That That's how they sort of balanced it there. But now that they're sort of just Blackhawks, but good... Uh, but really good. I think it's got to happen. So that's interesting. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what this does, really. Because that extra 150, is that's a lot of cost. You know, that's half a unit of goblins. Uh, I suppose when you put it that way, that's actually too bad. So I don't know. We'll see how that affects things. But they should be a lot better now. They should be. Um, even with all these like minor debuffs, um, there's just more men. So they're actually going to make it to a fight. So that's pretty great. Hi Elves, not a huge amount of things. Alice to the White Lion. Dragon Mounts has Siege Attacker. Yeah, this won't really affect multiplayer because you can't get Alice to the White Lion in multiplayer. So, anyway. Um, but still, that's nice. That's nice anyway. Lizardman, the Bastilladon with Solar Engine, is going to be slightly more accurate, which I find quite surprising. Um, I think I said this in the last video covering this patch because this is the same. Um, this was, you know, in there too. They're already ruddy accurate. I rarely see them miss. So that's interesting. That is very interesting. We'll see what that does. But I think they're a pretty good pick anyway. They're pretty niche, you know, um, against uh, wood elves. I really like them. That fire damage is really useful. You know, it's good insurance against something like Durthu, right? You can just you can just nail him. So I like that. But uh, yeah, slightly more accurate, which is interesting. Norska. A few changes here. Marauder Ice Wolf Chariots now can run at 95 speed. I think that's uh, higher than before. I think they're at like 80 I think, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But that's, uh, they're going to be very nippy. Be very quick indeed. Uh, Marauder Champions are going to have more health. I think that's a good idea because they are sort of a, they're a blockade more than being really offensive. Sure, they'll hack through like state troops and things. But against anything remotely elite, they rarely get any work done before they're butchered. You know, any decent sort of armor piercing unit will just chop through them really easily. So a bit of extra health. I think that's good, you know, considering their cost. I think that's nice. Uh, similar thing for the great weapons. Also, they're a little bit quicker, which I like, because Marauder Champions are so slow. They are so slow. Anyway, uh, Kiha the Tormentor. Kaiha? Kiha? Kiha? I don't know. Anyway, I think this is, uh, this, I think, is one of the things you can unlock in the Norska campaign if you choose a god, I think. You know, if you get to the top worship thingy, whatever that you know, mechanic is. So, again, not related to multiplayer here. Uh, for me, though, um, yeah, again, Siege Attacker. Obviously, no Siege battles in multiplayer, but custom battles, this will happen. For me and the Bale Fiend, they should have Siege Attacker. They're, you know, they're carrying giant mauls, and they're the size of a troll. You know, it, it's odd that they didn't have that. So, that's nice. Skaven, Plague Monk Sensor Bearers, plus one melee attack. Very, very slight change to these guys. They have a similar problem with the Crimson Killers. They can be focused down straight away. Um, but not even by, like, armor-piercing infant, like, you know, armor-piercing guns or whatever. No, it just anything. Crossbowmen can kill them easily. Uh, slingers, anything. Anything can kill them really easily. They have no armor. So, 
yeah, just one extra melee attack. I mean, they might get a little bit more work done before they die, but pretty much anything can kill them quite fast. So it'll be interesting to see if this really makes much of a difference, because I find they're still a very niche pick, um, because they, they're just too flimsy. You know, if anything cheap gets on top of them, they're still going to take just as much damage from, say, a unit of swordsmen than they would a unit of swordmasters of Hoeth, right? So it just seems odd. I, I'm not sure how much of a difference that's going to make, really. But we'll see. We'll see. Storm Vermin with Halberds plus two melee defense. I think that's a nice a nice benefit. They can get whittled down very quickly. I actually find that uh, cavalry charges... You know, you charge them with cavalry from a couple of different directions and they die. You know, they just, they can't hold up long enough. They need something to keep them a bit more survivable, I think, um, in combat. So I think that's a nice, nice pick. Just give them a little bit of extra melee defense, make them a little bit more survivable. So maybe they can actually get some work done in retaliation. Because, yeah, you surround them and they'll go down pretty quickly. So I like that. I like that. Quick head taper. Uh, head taker. Not head taper. Huh. Anyway, quick head taker. Uh, slightly cheaper, which makes sense because he's worse than Skrulk on pretty much every, you know, every demographic. He's just worse. So making him cheaper, fine. I'd like to see him get buffed. Honestly, I'd love to see him get sort of mad leadership buffs for nearby units because I love the idea of people being more scared of Queek than they are the enemy army. I think that would be really cool. And it would sort of give you the option to have a Skaven um, front line with leadership which, you know, is quite rare for Skaven. So the idea of that, I think, would be really fun. But no, no, just a bit cheaper. So I think it needs more work than that, but it's a start. Uh, Tomb Kings. Uh, Tomb Scorpion. Hit reactions, ignore chance from 0 to 40. So, yeah, he's going to he's gonna ignore more stuff. So he's going to get staggered less. So against things like uh, cavalry charges that tend to wipe out a Tomb Scorpion in seconds, he should, he should be able to fight back and get some work done, uh, rather than just getting you know, barreled over by the charge every time. So mass has gone down a bit, so we won't be able to push out of cavalry engagement, so that'll still be the way to counter them, but they'll be able to fight back a bit first, which I think is really good. That's a really nice change. Also, lower melee defense, lower melee attack, better bonus versus infantry, which, again, just he has enough mass to force his way through infantry. He's got more damage against infantry, but it means that anything that isn't infantry is just going to get rid of them quicker. He will be able to fight back a bit, but with lower stats generally, and more focus towards infantry, you're still better off getting something big on him. So I think this this suits the role of the Tomb Scorpion very nicely. So I think that's a nice change. Casket Souls, a bit cheaper. Fair enough. I mean, people don't often bring it. Um, usually if I bring one, I bring two, because it's funny. Um, but it, it always feels a bit like a meme, the casket of souls. So it would be nice if it was a little bit more affordable, and maybe people could actually use it, you know, in a more clever way, I suppose. Um, also, Katep, yeah, his mount is cheaper as well to mimic the cost of the, cost, uh, the casket of souls. Again, makes total sense. Um, but yeah, I think that's a nice change. I think that's a nice change, because they do have some cool sort of attributes, you know, the extra uh, power recharge and stuff that they give you. It's really kind of cool. So I'd like to see that. And the idea of some sort of armor-piercing artillery for taking out armored infantry, I think is really interesting. So it'd be nice if that got used more in a serious way rather than as a meme. So, Vampire Coast. De wow. Okay. Yep. It makes sense. They just came out, so they're going to get the most uh, most attention, aren't they? So here, Deck Droppers. Slower, and they turn a lot slower. That is great. That is a great change, because right now, they're completely sort of immune to archers. Uh, guns can take them out. Yeah, but archers, as long as you're microing, you can just turn back and forth. You just turn away when a volley's coming towards you. They take no damage, and then you move them back, get a shot into them. And, you know, when they go to retaliate, you just leave again. And you can just do that, and you can never get touched. So you can even fight just armies of archers without any problems with deck droppers, and that's silly. That makes no sense. Um, so, them being a bit slower to turn, it means they're gonna, it's going to be harder to dip in and out of combat like that. Um, you might still be able to do it, but they'll have fewer, you know, times that they run in to fire, right? Because they have to turn around. A lot more so it's going to delay them a bit so they won't they might still be able to be so you know somewhat invincible but by then your front line's under attack and you have more to worry about so that's a good change i think that's good i can't wait to see how that actually affects things uh deck drop is handgun slightly less ammo and reduced accuracy and reduced ap and reduced base damage all brilliant deck droppers handguns are completely overpowered right now um, they're invincible, like all deck droppers, if they're microed well, but also they can kill such great units. 
You know, um, same same thing with the Raven Heralds, right? You can just go, oh, those for me with great weapons, I'll kill them. Done. It's it's kind of horrible. And then later on, you just chase lords around with them. It's disgusting. So yeah, they definitely need less ammo. They need the amount of damage they can do if they stay alive and are able to exhaust their ammunition is too much. Uh, it is too much, especially for a flying unit that you know is always going to be relatively safe. Um, you know, you're immune to stuff on the ground, right? Nothing on the ground in melee can catch you, so you should be paying extra for that sort of, that advantage. So, um, yeah, they shouldn't be as good at killing things, so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the bombers and the, uh, Salt Lord Scuttlers, more ammo, I think that's a good idea because these guys actually have very little damage potential nowadays, I find. So, yeah, having them be a little bit better is nice, they do have to get closer to their target, which means they're going to be more vulnerable, generally, than, say, the handguns. So, I think that's nice, giving them a bit more ammo, so if they are able to get more work done, they can. You know, I like that. Uh, Deckhands mob, less health. Finally. Finally. These guys never die. Just, they have so much health, they are so difficult to kill. They are the best roadblocks in the game. So, less health and people might actually be able to get some momentum when they're attacking an enemy army. I like that. Pole arms, again, less health. Uh, Tide of Skjold, less health. Gunnery mobs, less health. Gunnery mob handguns, less health. Black spot, less health. So all, all the deck hands just have less health, and that's a great, that's a great change. They just took too long to kill. Um, it was an absolute nightmare. You know, even had stuff that should have wiped them out. You know, really good cavalry charge from, like, Reichsguard or something. Barely make a dent. Just, yeah, they need to die quicker. It's a bit obscene. So, uh, the gunnery mob bombers. Better charge bonus. That seems unusual. Um, extra men. Less health. Uh, more ammo and melee attack. It seems odd. Uh, I guess the gunnery mob, I mean, they seem to me like they're supposed to be a bit of a hybrid thing. Because they can only really get one volley of bombs in. Um, before they're engaged, usually. You know, you don't necessarily want them in the very front line, but they're such short range, it's very easy to catch them. So I think the idea of them being able to throw in some bombs and then charge into melee, use them a bit more like miners with blasting charges than you do, um, you know, an actual ranged unit. So that encourages that a bit. They do have more ammunition, though, which I think is interesting. So I guess if you can keep them safe, they can get more work done with their bombs. But, all right, it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out, I think. They... It seems like they're trying to encourage two completely different things with these changes. You know, they're good in melee too, but also they can stand and shoot things more. It seems odd, but we'll see. We'll see. Gunnery mobs with hand cannons. More expensive. More men on ultra, I guess. I don't know. I figure this might be some bugs. Maybe they just didn't change the number of men when you had on them on higher settings. I'm not sure. But uh, lower base projectile damage, but they can do more AP. And they have less health, just like everything else. So, interesting. So, more armor piercing, which is kind of cool. So, the hand cannons. I don't know, I have a feeling that the hand cannons, although they're sort of shotguns, right? You know, you think, oh yeah, hordes of infantry, just blast them. Um, I find the spread is such that they're really good against large targets. If, there are some, is there, if there's something very large, shoot the hand cannons at it. Because every single one of those shots will hit, even with their low accuracy. Um, because it's such a big target, right? You know, it's very hard to miss a barn door. And when you've got something like a mammoth running around, it's basically, you know, the size of a barn. Hard to miss. So every hit, you know, every shot hits. So I think they're actually better at shooting large things, personally, than, uh, you know, blasting hordes of infantry. So that's just, that's just me, though. I'm not sure that's really intended. But the extra AP means they'll actually get a lot more damage into some expensive large targets, you know, like uh, Deathclaw or whatever. So I like that. This is interesting. This intrigues me because uh, no one uses these guys. So I think the extra cost might offset the extra help they're getting here, but I don't know. Uh, animated hulks. Extra armor. Good. These guys die far too quickly just to cheap spearmen. That They're completely pointless. No one ever brings them. An extra melee defense. So the extra melee defense leader, uh, leadership and armor, it means they're going to take less damage when they do get hit. They're going to get hit less and... They're going to need to take more damage before they start crumbling. So this means that they will actually be able to get something done. Which is great, because these guys just suck. They're just not cost effective. So that's brilliant. Just big buff all round. I really like that. Bloody Reaver Deck Guard. Extra melee defense. Uh, Alright, cool. Uh, Deck Guard Halberds. More melee defense. Yeah, again, fair enough. Um, I think it helps them against sort of more elite things that tend to just mulch them. Because they don't have very good AP. So they need to be able to stay alive a bit. Uh, let that healing keep them going. Or else... Anything of a similar cost is just going to wipe the floor with them, and that's sort of what happens. You know, they're very good against things that are cheaper than them, but that's the case with a lot of things, because 
the better something is, the more expensive it is. So it's, it's like saying, yeah, you can defeat something that's worse. It's, you know, it doesn't make much sense. But anyway, so I like that. It's a small change, but I think that's useful. Uh, still going to be very weak to huge amounts of archers and things like that. So that's fine. Gallows Giant. Projectiles no longer expire before reaching max range. In other words, the flames from the Gallows Giant will actually do the damage they're supposed to. Supposedly, you know, because the projectile won't get bored. Um, before it actually hits the things. So that's nice. That's nice. It should actually go straight down the line and actually damage as it travels. So I like that. That is beautiful. Um, because the Gallows Giant really underperforms. The leadership penalties are pretty fun, but there's better ways to have that in an army than uh, rely on something as, as expensive as the Gallows Giant. Necrofex Colossus, a bit more expensive. Makes sense. They're pretty crazy. Shade Wraith Gunners are actually cheaper, which I think is interesting, because... I mean, I don't think they're quite the insta-pick that they used to be, because now people know just you get anything near them in melee, even though they're ethereal and have a load of physical resist, they still melt in seconds, because all of the gunners do. So, um, yeah, I think being a bit cheaper kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, Death Streak Terrorgeist, so slightly taller now, <laughs> and also wider. Um, so this is an odd one, so it means they're going to be a bigger, like a bigger target for missiles. Good, right? good. You want to be able to try and shoot at them to get them away from stuff. So that's nice. So they'll be more vulnerable to that. But also because they're so much wider, they're going to be harder to pull out of melee. And that's because since they're so much wider, they've got a bigger footprint, there's going to be more stuff in their way that they're trying to move through. You know, they won't just have to push like two guys out of the way to get out of that fight. They'll have to push those two guys and the seven others stood around them. You know, it's just going to be a lot more stuff they have to push through. Which again, I think makes a lot of sense. Because especially with a faction that can heal, terror guys can just be such a nuisance. You know, they'll dive in, get a load of work done, swan off, get healed, come back, and they rarely have to worry. It's very difficult to bog them down, even with some pretty big stuff. Um, it is very difficult just to shut them down for good. So that's a good change. That's a good change. It stops people from being able to exploit them quite so much. Luther Harkon. So, yep, yeah, same empty size as that. Yep. Yeah. So, cool. All the same now. Although apparently he used to be a dragon-sized one, so I guess he was actually worse than the usual death streak in terms of being able to maneuver, which is interesting. Luther Harkon, uh, all hands ahoy. Ability in multiplayer battles has gone. Interesting. He's cheaper, though. So, okay. Hornswoggle has been removed from Aranessa. Ugh, so she's cheaper, but yeah, that's... No, no, rubbish change. She sucks. Aranessa's terrible now. She was overpowered because that combat animation, but now she just can't catch anything, and she needed some other ways to support her lines because on her own, she's a bit, she's a bit rubbish. Um, I think this is a very sad thing. Hornswoggle is a very good ability, and it actually set her apart from all of the other lords that are actually far better than her. You know, Silostra's got all the magic. Uh, Harkon, great at killing mages, and he's maneuverable because he's got a decent quick mount in the air. Um, you know, he can shoot and attack stuff, so he's got the gun as well. Like, Aroness doesn't have much. You know, even on a mount, she gets, well, like, plus two speed, so she can't really catch anything that she's good at fighting, so she's kind of a waste, so it's a pity. I mean, yeah, she's got that net, but even then, it doesn't last that long, so she usually still can't catch that thing. It's very easy just to send something at her uh, when the net's used, just to stop her from getting to her intended target. So, I don't know. That, I think, is a real pity. Um, Vampire Fleet Admirals. They also have lost Hornswoggle. Again, pity. That's a pity. Um, is it being replaced by Taunt? I hope so. They need something, because that seems like a pity. This is such a great ability. I mean, it's a very, very good ability, but just like any undead faction, the Lord has to be the one that's the most powerful in an army. So to remove useful things like that, I think is a pity. But I don't know. We'll see how, how it plays out. Uh, Silostra Diaphan, her rotting uh, leviathan, has siege attacker. Makes sense. It's a giant crab. Of course it can push down a wall or, you know, a door or whatever. That's fine. Count Noctilus, more expensive. Yeah, yeah, totally. He's... He's just the best one. He's the instant pick. He's the most competitive pick. So make him more expensive. So it makes the others more viable. That's the way to do it. Because yeah, he's worth way more than his cost. It's not like the rest are terrible. It's just, no, he's really, really good. So that makes sense. Vampire Counts. A lot of changes here too. Mainly to Hellsteeds. Um, so Terrorgeist. Yep, Terrorgeist. Same as the Death Streak Terrorgeist. It's going to be harder to get out of combat now. I think that's a good, good, good move. Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. Undeath Resurgent has been removed. Alright, yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess. He's got a lot of other stuff going for him, so maybe that was a bit much. Um, he's more of a... He gets in and fights stuff himself, rather than 
buffing nearby things. I think Undead Resurgent is more of a support thing, where he's more of a fighter, you know? So I like that. I think that's an interesting change. Um, also, uh, he is more expensive on foot with less armor. Uh, on a Barded uh, Nightmare, he's more expensive with less armor. Hellsteed, more expensive, less armor. And Zombie Dragon, way less melee defense and more expensive. So I guess they figured this guy just needed some major debuffs. The Red Duke, more expensive on foot, but he does have Frenzy, which is kind of cool. Makes a lot of sense for him. He's a bloodthirsty maniac, so perfect. So again, more expensive frenzy more expensive more armor in frenzy and the zombie dragon less melee defense more expensive but he has frenzy so i like that i like that change that feels more thematic for the red duke and uh that to me kind of balances out i like that it means that he's gonna be better in sustained combat with that frenzy ability which i like i think that's fun you know get him really stuck in so that's very cool uh vampire of shadows hellsteed more armor death more armor generally uh, Hellsteed, more armor. Just, yeah, Hellsteed seems to be getting more armor across the board here. Well, except for the Vampire Lord there, anyway. The Lamian uh, Vampire Lord with Zombie Dragon, Siege Attacker, and Zombie Dragon for the Necrog one. Yeah, of course, they're dragons, they need Siege Attacker. The Von Karstein Vampire Lord, Zombie Dragon, added Siege Attacker. Yep. White King, more armor. I think that's a good move. Isabella von Karstein on a Hellsteed, more armor. And Manfred von Karstein, more armor on a Hellsteed. I think that makes sense. Hellsteeds are very, very, very squishy. And, which is odd, because, you know, they're still good mounts, right? So, I think a bit of extra armor is a nice change. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. So, cool. And yeah, White King with more armor as well, I think is nice, because the White King is a kind of a cool pick. I like, uh, I like the White King, but I don't see him often enough, I find. So it's nice. Just a little more incentive to bring him. Wood Elves. Tree Man. Hit Reactions Ignore Chance. Goes way up. Which is good, because Tree Men suck. I mean, yeah, they're impossible to kill, but they never get any work done. They just sort of flop around for a bit. You know, if they try and attack something, they can be surrounded in goblins, and they'll just sort of stand on one guy. And it says, great, you got a kill. Well done. And, you know, it'll take another half an hour before he attacks again. He's just a bit crap. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I like this. It just means he'll have more chance to actually attack stuff, which is very good. I like that. It's not going to be a huge difference because he's still a lumbering oaf. Still doesn't have the best splash damage. Um, so, still, it'll make, a, it'll make a bit of difference. I like that. Orion, better melee defense. Good, Orion had no melee defense. It was so low. Unbelievably so. Um, serious glass cannon, though. It made sense for his playstyle, but his melee defense was just unbelievably low for, you know... A lord of his caliber. If that makes sense. Um, I think it's something like 14 or something. It was awful. So, um, yeah. Nice to see that improve. Uh, Wildwood Rangers. Extra leadership. I mean, I'm not sure that's going to make the world a difference. I find they need something to make them more survivable. Because, um, yeah, they they have the same problem that... Um, uh, what are they called? Sensor bearers. Plague Monk Sensor bearers have. Where they're very expensive but have no armor. So they can be killed by very cheap ranged units. Or whittled down by very cheap infantry units. You know, it's it's tough. They just aren't very survivable. So I feel like they need something else. Because uh, they already have great leadership. They already almost fight to the last man. So I'm not sure how much of a difference it's going to make. But we'll see. Uh, so abilities. Helmet Discord. Less effect range. Makes a lot of sense. Helmet Discord is a crazy good ability. Crazy good. So, um, yeah. Slightly lower effect range I think makes a lot of sense. Um, Helmet Discord quite new to multiplayer. Um, hasn't been a lot of, you know, on, I don't think it's been on anything until like the last couple of patches. So um, it's suddenly it's suddenly seen as way too valuable here. So lowering its effect range, it just means it's not going to basically get the entire army screwed. So I like that. I think that's good. It'll be, you know, more of what the character is dueling or, you know, a couple of units that are in support of whatever. I think it's a good thing. I think this is good. It was very, very big, that effect. So that's a nice change. Uh, dwarfs. Uh, Red Ruin for Ungrim Iron Fist, that's one of his abilities. Um, it's been changed to unlimited uses, um, but it recharges in melee now, which is often the case. It's either you have a certain amount of charges of it, or, you know, you have to recharge it somehow. So, I like that. I like that change. It means he's going to be more scrappy. You know, you actually want to get him into combat nice and early um, in order to get all of his abilities going, which I think fits him very well. You know, he's not going to sit back and let people fight while he waits for his abilities to recharge. That's not Ungrim. So, that's perfect. Very thematic. And I think it'll be pretty straightforward gameplay-wise. I think it'll, it'll have very little other effect for most people who utilize him well because you tend to want to get him stuck into melee anyway so the duration has gone down a bit though and it's slightly more expensive so that will change things a little bit i think i think that will change things a little bit the axe of dargo 
So uh, less ability duration again, but huge, huge ability recharge, uh, you know, buff there. Minus 90 ability recharge is pretty massive. It means he's going to be used this a lot, and it recharges in melee. So he's going to be able to use this ability a lot more, and this one a little bit less. Although, I think it's been changed to unlimited uses from zero. So even if you use it twice, you've used it twice as much as you ever could before. I think it had one use before. Um, so change of unlimited uses from one. I said zero, didn't I? But yeah, you can only use it the one time, I think. So that's great. Uh, here, Rune of Slowness. So change to minus 19 movement speed. But it's removed the charge effect bonus. Because, uh, yeah, I think it lowered people's charge bonuses. Um, but you get damage with momentum anyway, so just slowing things down, it's still going to decrease the damage they get on the charge. So uh, that's nice, because that's a pretty good debuff to speed now, and that on the Thane makes a lot more sense. So that's nice to see. Flash Bomb, remove recharge in melee. So uh, the Flash Bomb for Grombrundle, uh, Grombrindle rather. Sorry, Grombrundle is a guy I know. He goes by the game tag Grombrundle. Not Grombrindle, but I get confused now. Damn you. Anyway, so... Uh, the remove recharge of melee, which I think is interesting. It means he can be a bit more conservative, I suppose, which, again, doesn't seem to fit uh, Grom Brundle. <laughs> did it again. Grom Brindle. There we go. Um, and yeah, less duration. I don't know, it seems like a weird one, but I guess this makes sense because it's used to pin things down. So if he's trying to fight something but can't catch up to it and somebody is trying to, you know, just kite him around, it means he's not left without a flash bomb because he can't fight anything, right? So... That's good, because the Flash Bomb itself is supposed to pin people in place so we can fight them. So, if he has to fight them in order to get it, he'll never be able to use it. So, I like that change, actually. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, indeed. Uh, the Rune Helm of Zufba, so minus four leadership, and it's removed the uh, deactivation condition. I don't know what that means, honestly. If uh, someone could have a look at that ability and let me know what on earth they're on about, um, then that would be great. So, thanks. Greenskins. Get on with it for Azag. Uh, it's removed the charge bonus effect, but it adds leadership instead. Um, I mentioned this in the last video on this patch. I think that's great. Azag's all about the leadership. He was, you know, a total terror because he was the only green skin to ever use strategy. Um, because, of course, he had Nagash whispering into his ear the whole time from his magic hat. So it's a problem, you know, that's a problem. Um, so, the idea of him just giving extra leadership makes a lot of sense, because he's actually in command of his army, which most greenskins aren't. They just go, they just shout wah, and everything runs into pikes. And uh, usually there's enough greenskins that the pikes eventually snap and become useless and everyone gets killed. And uh, covered in dung. That's the usual greenskin way. But no, as I use strategy. So, extra leadership makes a lot of sense for him. I love it. Gitsnick for Grimgore. So, Gitsnick being his big old axe. Um, Lower ability duration, but it recharges far quicker, and it recharges in melee. Which works for me, it means he's going to be way more offensive, he's going to be able to do a lot more damage, it's going to be a lot harder to catch him uh, while that's on cooldown, because it'll cool down much quicker, and of course he's always going to be in melee, because it's Grimgore, and that's all he's good at. And uh, you're going to want to keep recharging the war. that's the main reason to bring him, so you can just have something that you can just shove in the front line, he can just keep fighting, and he'll keep getting war because of course war regenerates in melee as well. So that makes a lot of sense, and that should actually make Grimgore a lot better. Grimgore is definitely getting a lot of love with the last few patches. So, Vampire Coast. Captain Roth's Moon Dial, minus 50 meter target range. That's a good start, that range is obscene. It, it's got a higher range than archers do. So it means that if any archer is in range of you, you can put zombies on top of them. And that's too much, you know, that is too much. So that's very cool to see that's been lowered a bit, because it's insane, the range that he had on that. He could, yeah, he could just put zombies anywhere on the map, pretty much. It was madness. So here, uh, Wood Elves, Horn of the Wild Hunt. Uh, so this is for Ryan, obviously, that's his horn of hunting things wildly. Uh, plus three duration, so it lasts a little bit longer, because sometimes it doesn't last all that long, I find. Um, it's often hard to get to them. But with that plus three duration, I'm not sure that's really going to make up for the fact that the speed effect has been removed. So you're going to have to use it rather than on your whole army and charge everything in, hope that everything actually hits the front line in time. Um, you're going to have to really coordinate to get the best out of the charge bonuses. But the charge bonuses are huge now. It went from 36%, which is gigantic, to uh, 54%. That's going to put like Wild Riders up to something like 130 charge bonus, which is obscene. So that's going to be awesome. 
That, I think, is a really cool change, but you have to use it a bit more strategically, which I like. But it means you can't use it to run things away like you could before, technically. So, less versatility, but it's not really about running away, is it? It's about the wild hunt, right? We're doing this for Kurnos. So, come on, lads. Let's go collect some scalps or whatever it is we crazy wood elves do. So, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I think this is more thematic, and it's still a hell of a bonus. It's going to make wild riders just terrifying. I mean, they're already scary enough, but that is so cool. So, I really like that change for a ride as well. And the extra melee defense is nice for him too. So, you know, that's cool. So, spells, denizens of the deep. Uh, bigger recharge time. Um, it's only four seconds, but that helps. Um, that could be spammed a lot, and it made it very difficult, especially with all the deck hands having so much health. Obviously, that's been slightly nerfed, but still, it was very difficult to get through even the, you know, Denizens of the Deep zombie summons. It was a pain. Drowned Dead. Oh, wait, no, Denizens of the Deep. No, that's the crab one, isn't it? Yeah, that's the crab one. Okay, yeah, that people could do quite often too and they're very 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 hard to kill and have armor piercing and a lot of mass so yeah that was terrifying making them making them you know come around a little bit less often is good because you could often see like more than one of these summons going at one time which was obscene uh drowned dead gonna cost more good good i think they just they're so much better than the zombies for uh, the vampire counts that i think they're being a bit more expensive makes a lot of sense also the upgrade is going to be more expensive too i mean yeah fair. they've got guns for god's sake you've got so much versatility with these units that it makes sense they cost more invocation to heck so less seconds duration so um i'm pretty sure in the last comment section about the last uh patch uh people kind of decided it was health per tick rather than health you know, like a guaranteed amount of healing for the spell, and it took as long as it took, because it was up for some debate in my head as to whether this meant that they're going to get the healing quicker, so it, the spell was better than it was, or the spell would be worse because there'd be less ticks that are healing. But I'm pretty sure it's healing per tick, so that means it's going to heal less overall. So that's interesting. I think that's um, I think it's probably a good idea, because it is the best healing spell ever, and the fact it can raise the dead as well. Um, it, it's kind of scary. You can get uh, two units of Blood Knights back up to a full unit. You know, it's nuts. It's it's super powerful. So it makes sense that it does a little bit less healing than a lot of the other healing spells that can't actually do all the same things that Invocation to Heck can. So I like that. Vindictive Glare is going to cost a bit more, and so is the upgraded version. Yeah, yeah. Greenskin Magic Missiles are just completely stuck in the meta right now because they are so affordable and do so much damage um i mean Alariel will take you know a third of a health to one of these so yeah it should cost more than it does it's kind of obscene so yeah a little bit little bit of extra cost there i think will definitely help balance it so um that's it that's it guys so um join the discussion in the comments section see what you think of these changes it's uh, a lot of them were covered in that first patch um, I think most of the changes have actually been done to um, the campaign stuff, which I'll let you guys read, because, yeah, I don't play campaign enough to be able to put a lot of this into context, really, um, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try, I'll just leave you guys the link, but uh, this is the multiplayer stuff, and yeah, it's still in beta, but the fact that they've done an update to the, the beta patch makes me think that they must be getting close to releasing this patch soon, right? I mean, gotta be. They've got to be. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for some of these changes to come to multiplayer. I think it's going to address quite a few things, and we should see a lot more variety. It seems to be units that I never really see um, are getting some attention, which I think is really good. Um, it won't be for the meme anymore. They'll just be a, a different strategy that's also, also viable. And that is a great change. That's always what you want in a patch, you know, to have lesser used things become viable. That is a great change. So hopefully this patch will encourage that a lot. So yippee. So guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.